we're here talking to Chaz Red, who is a candidate for Dallas City Council in District 7. Absolutely. And welcome. Thanks for coming to well, our Well, uh, thank, thank you for having me. You <laughs> if bet. I may say so again. You bet. Um, so give us some basic info about your background and uh, what makes you think you're a good candidate for Dallas City Council. Okay, well, uh, a little about my bio or my background. I would say the, the elevator version of it. I try to be brief as possible. I grew up in the district. I went to Skyline High School. Uh, my mother was a principal administrator there in the area. Uh, my father is a school teacher. He's been in DISD for about 35 years and whatnot. He's retired now. Uh, after Skyline, I went to went to University of North Texas and graduated there as a political science major. After that, I went to law school. I left law school and joined uh, an investment uh, banking firm, one of the largest ones on Wall Street. And worked there for a while to, until uh, uh, after uh, after 9/11. I took some time off and went work with the Homeland Security. It was TSA at the time, so I had a chance to travel the country. And what, what our main job was was securing the uh, securing the airport uh, screeners process. Uh -huh. That was a process where we federalized all of these screeners there. So that was interesting. It was, and I mentioned that because it was civic. It gave me a chance to give back and to see the country. And you know, call to duty. I was a little bit too old to go sign back up for the. The Army or the Armed Service, so I had that opportunity. Wow. I came back, I uh, started a business, Southwest Construction, which I'm currently running now as well. Um, did that for a while, uh, building homes, but it's a home building uh, industry. And then when you know it, we had the uh, Katrina catastrophe and uh, down in uh, Louisiana. And seeing the people's faces on television, the suffering and whatnot, I went and took some time off, took a hiatus, and went down there for nine months, worked with FEMA. Stayed out of base camp down in uh, middle of New Orleans and was able to help the, help the people about that. And I tell you all this, tell you my background and, and why I have interest in helping people. Right. Uh, subsequent to that, came back, uh, went back into banking and whatnot, and still had Southwest Construction, and that's what I'm focusing on now, as well as uh, the civic things. And I think there's a lot of development things that can be done in District Seven. A lot of things that are not done in District Seven. Mm -hmm. I like to make it part of the city, and I like to see Dallas survive and prosper, and that's the purpose of what I'm running. Great. Well, you know, this whole MySpace Pictures incident, has, has it derailed your candidacy in any way? Uh, have you well, what's the definition of derail? Now, <laughs> I, I, I put it like this. If you're on a bridge and there's a bump in the road, you swerve and hit the side. It's not derailed. At least you didn't go over the cliff. <laughs> right. But right. It, it did do some, uh, it did some damage. Yeah, it did do some damage that, unfortunately. But uh, in the end, I think, people that I'm appealing to would be people that look at it rationally. Is it a stupid picture? Was it a stupid idea? Of course. We all got to say that. I mean, if it was vice versa, I would crack a joke or two about it. I mean, sure. But in the end of the day, is there anything illegal in the picture? <laughs> is there anything, you know, I mean, if there's anything illegal, anything I shouldn't be doing in the picture, I was at home, just one of those pictures that were taken. You were fooling around, basically. Basically, yeah. Yeah. And I want to point out, hey, that was not my MySpace page. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's a, it wasn't something that I proudly posted or whatnot. It, well, that, that brings up the other question. Are you still friends with Quana, this uh, gal who posted? Am I it? still friends with her? Uh, yeah, we're still friends. I mean, it was a little, she's apologized, and she was, you know, it's better for her to explain it for me, but she was, uh, you know, she did what she did. I, I don't think she would. Realize it would have the effect. I think she was doing it more as a tongue in cheek and yeah. I'll show you type thing, but it, it had its effect. And then the media got a hold of it. Do you think you got a raw deal in the media about the whole situation? Well, yes, I, I think I did get a raw deal. And actually, this is the first time that I said anything about it or, or publicly mentioned it. Many of the people in my campaign, they wanted to go write press releases or there are many blogs. People blew up the blogosphere talking about it. But I knew if I went and defended myself, oh, he's just, that's what every politician says. Or if I said this has anything, or he's playing the race card, he's doing this, he's doing that. And so I thought it would be best if we just sit back and let it play out the way it has. Uh, disappointingly, uh, there's been some people that have stood up for me and, and mentioned some of the things, but then there's been a lot of, how do I say it, uh, people that have their own agenda and push their own agenda uh, concerning the issue as well. Yeah, okay. Well, just for the record, are those your handguns that you're shown pictured with? I mean, do you own those? That's a funny question. Yeah. For the record, those guns, one of the guns were, were my guns, but I do own handguns, yes. Sure. For the record, so yeah. But to answer your question directly, one was and one was not. Okay. I <laughs> was uh, just curious. Um, 
What can you tell us about the voters in, in District 7? Are they a politically active population? Well, we have over 60,000 registered voters in District 7, and this election is going to be decided by about 1,000 or 2,000 votes. So I think that's, I think they should be, or could be, more active. Uh, there's an article in the paper today about some of the candidates that are not active in voting. And so uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, say too much about the constituents when you've got the people that's running haven't been too active in the voting process as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that all comes from the fact that it just hasn't been anything to motivate a person to vote. Our last presidential election, there was a, a person at the ticket that got the people out and motivated them, talked to their issues, and you saw overwhelmingly you had the large numbers. And I think of some type of way we could do that at a local level that possibly we can get the people out needed to vote. And the people at the end of the day of who should decide. It's just unfortunate when you have such low numbers of voters, the process is able to be hijacked by outside influence that be able to push money and draw the people to the, to the polls. I would hope for 90 to 100 percent participation. Wow. That'd be great. That'd be great. It, it's, a, it's a pipe dream, but that's yeah. what <laughs> So what strategies will you use to get people out and, and voting for you? Well, uh, again, I, I haven't taken any corporate or, or development money and so whatnot. It's basically a grassroots operation, and we're going door to door, making the calls, uh, trying to make the signs, get the signs out there, and phone banks and things such as that, just have a chance to meet the people and try to come up with start new with different ideas that may might catch up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are the big issues facing the people in District 7, and, and what measures need attention from the City Council in order to make it a better place to live? Absolutely. To work? Well, and uh, District 7 is one of the largest geographical areas in the uh, in the city. you got the South Dallas, so that's a large part of it. Then you got the Ferguson area, that area there. Then you got the Parkdale area. And so all three different parts are three, basically, s s three different in, in themselves, different areas and whatnot. Now. Uh, if, if I may take the uh, analogy as a surgeon, when you deal with a patient, you go to where the, the most trouble is first, you fix it, and then you go you, you go to the next point. We're looking at the South uh, South Dallas Fair Park area, and I think that area needs a lot of attention due to the, the poverty rate there is twice the national average. Uh, it's the, the, the housing pro the housing uh, people losing their homes due to foreclosures. There's no uh, jobs, no, and I think that needs to be a because if we, we get that and fix that right, and then that's going to be a beacon for the rest of the city and whatnot to go to go forward. And so I think there should be a lot of attention should be given to that to that area, get get jobs, get green green jobs there, get the right type of development, uh, the cross section of development, and get people coming back. That area to me is the crown jewel of Dallas due to the fact that the geopolitics what's going on, oil prices are going to come back up, and, and I think everyone knows that because. You know, it's, we, we can't make more of it. it. It is what it is, and it's going to be a diminishing reply, uh, supply. And so, therefore, the proximity to downtown, I think, is, that's, is the strength of South Dallas. And so I think if we get the right type of development, we can redo that and get money in that area and have it going and be a fuel for, fuel for the whole city, as well as the issues such as in the uh, Ferguson area. We have, at the Ferguson area, we have some issues with street crossings. Uh, some of the constituents talked about some of the businesses are not uh, code specific and, and issues such as that. Okay. Wow. Great. Will you be visiting some of the polling places on election day? Absolutely. I plan to visit as many as possible. Uh, me, myself, I'm going to vote early and so I'll have that whole day to go place to place and, and hopefully caravan some people there. <laughs> if we get enough money to get some buses, care, do, do some little caravan driving and get people to the polls out and see what we can do. Great. Was well, there anything else you'd like to tell us? Well, uh, I'd just like to say, if I'll just go out and vote, and I hope I can get your support. Well, thank you, Chaz Red, uh, candidate for uh, District 7, Dallas City Council. Well, thank you for having me, sir. Okay.